the brand new Silhouette Cameo 5 Alpha is here. I've been testing with it nonstop and I've been working specifically on print and cut. It is new and improved. We're going to go over everything you need to know, what's different, how well does it work, and is it worth the upgrade? Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette, and you found your way to Silhouette Success. There is a ton of information in this video about the Alpha 5, about the new print and cut feature, and about print and cut in general. If you like stickers, you're going to want to stick around. There's a lot of information in this video, so let's jump right in. Let's start off in the page setup panel. I do already have my machine set to the Cameo 5 Alpha. However, we need to switch our media size so that it matches our printer size. Of course, that has not changed. I can either pick a letter or printer. They're both set to eight and a half by 11 inches and that works with my printer. Now with the Cameo 5 Alpha, you have to update the software to Silhouette Studio V5.0.402. In V5, they have moved the print border. You can find it right on the second tab here in the grid settings right at the top. See here, show print border, and then your gray line is going to show up so you can see where your design will print. Now they have also moved print and cut. It has its own panel now, and if you need to turn on registration marks, you're going to click here. This will pop up, and you can just click on enable registration marks to bring those marks up. Now right away, you're going to see the difference between all of the old machines and the Cameo 5 Alpha. All of the other machines had three registration marks and this one was a little square. Now they are all little corner brackets and there are four of them. You do lose a little bit of space here, but it corrects the problem of the stickers in the lower right hand corner being off a little bit. And I did get a little bit of footage from the last project I was working on. I printed one using the new registration system and one using the older registration system so that you can see the difference when it's actually printed out. Now we're going to test it out and see how this works. I do have my sticker sheet all set up here. I got this bundle from Creative Fabrica. It will be linked in the description. Anyway, registration marks work pretty much the same as they always have. You need to keep the hatched areas clear. You don't want anything interfering with the sensors reading the marks. What I like to do, since I have mine all grouped together, is select the whole thing and then center to page. And that's going to put it right in the middle of your page. You can click off of it and see there's plenty of room around all of the registration marks. And I could fill in some extra space here and there. If I rearranged, I could probably get another sticker or two on here. But this is what we're going with today. Now let's head over to the send page and take a look because a few things have switched around here too. If you are still working in V4 and you are upgrading, you're going to have to get used to V5 and I've been teaching on V5 for a while. However, I want to go over this just one more time because this is a major difference and it matters when you're creating stickers. These stickers actually came in with the offset and the outline already set. They only have one cut line. However, if you're creating your own, you know that the text inside and all of the graphic elements would have cut lines around them. Then you group those together and create your offset. Typically in V4, you would use cut edge and those settings were off to the side here. In V5, those settings are down at the bottom and they are labeled differently. So if you wanted to cut everything with tool one, you would use tool one, use all selected lines. And in this case, we would want to just cut edge, 
you would click this one, Tool 1, Use Outline of Selection. The same is true in V5 as it was in V4. You have to have all of these elements grouped together before it will just cut the edge of the offset. So keep that in mind as well. And then you have underneath that the same options, but for Tool 2. And underneath that, you have Ignore Selected Lines, which means nothing would cut. That's a quick rundown, but on this one, we can either use all selected lines or the outline of the selection because this file was created so that the cut lines were just along the edge anyway. Now, I do not have my media loaded. We'll get to that in just a minute. I am going to go with sticker paper white, and I'm going to go with the original settings in the software to test that out to see how well this does. This will produce a kiss cut. I have tried out my die cut settings and we will do that as well in just a few minutes. But for right now, we want to see if the settings in the software will produce a nice cut. And if they need any adjustments, we'll go through and do that. Back on the design page, we're going to head up to file and down to print. Your print preview screen will pop up. It's very important that you check this to make sure that nothing is out of the print area. You wanna make sure that these little corners are clear. If everything looks good, then you can click on print and your printer preferences box should pop up. I'm going with my Ecotank 2720. My document size is set to eight and a half by 11. And I usually use premium presentation paper matte and I keep my quality on high. Since all of this looks good, we can click on OK and then print. Now let's take our printed sheet and get it set on our mat right at the top corner of the grid on the cutting mat. You want to line your mat up with the first line on your machine all the way to the left. Once you hit send, it's going to start reading the registration marks. And again, it's going to read four of them instead of just three. It doesn't add a ton of time. It is supposed to add a lot of accuracy. I have not tried glossy paper with the Alpha yet. So if you're interested in those results, let me know and I can test that out as well. After it reads the marks, it will tap to adjust the blade and then start cutting. The Cameo 5 Alpha is quite a bit quieter than the Cameo 5 was, and the Cameo 5 was quieter than the Cameo 4. So we are making progress here. Let's check the stickers before we unload the machine. It looks like it was a really nice die cut. Here you go, you can see the cut quality and the accuracy. But I think we need to take this up a notch and test the accuracy just a bit further. We can grab a rectangle from our drawing tools and draw out a rectangle. We wanna make sure that it's both within the cut border and still clear of the registration marks. We can set this to black, right click, send it to the back, and then center it to the page. Now all of our stickers have a black background. The offset is still in white, and when we peel a sticker off, we'll be able to see exactly how accurate these cuts are. At this point in time, we can also test for the die cut settings that I typically use. If we set the rectangle line color to blue, then we can go to the send page Go to cut by line color. Our stickers are in black and the sticker sheet is in blue. We have the stickers still set to a kiss cut. We want to set this to a die cut. So we can click on this little blue box here and we know we're adjusting the right settings because we have the blue box down here. I'm going to leave it at sticker paper white but I'm going to bump my blade up to a five 
and I'm going to increase my force to a 16. And I'm also going to swap these. I want the stickers to cut first, so I can grab this little square here and just pull it up until they have reordered themselves in the software. The software will cut in whatever order you have these arranged in. So the stickers will cut out first as a kiss cut, and then the sticker sheet will cut out as a die cut. I'm going to walk through the same exact process as I used for the first sheet, getting the paper on the mat and loading it into the machine. And the machine is going to read the marks, but then I want you to pay attention because the machine did not tap to adjust the blade. It remembered this setting from the previous cut of Kiss Cut stickers and did not readjust. That is new. It did, however, adjust after it finished the first cut so that it would be deeper for the die cut. But again, it did not tap hard to reset itself. It just tapped to adjust to the new setting. So it jumped from the two up to a five without resetting. So I just figured all of that out in real time. It's kind of cool. I'll have to play more with that feature to see when it does that, when it doesn't do that, or if it just always remembers the setting of the auto blade. Now it seems that both the die cut and the kiss cut worked properly, so we can unload this and get the excess material up off the mat. Take a look at the cuts. First one I'm showing here is from the bottom right hand side of the sticker sheet. That's typically where you run into problems. The next one I'm going to show you is from the upper left hand side of the sheet, which typically cuts better. It seems that they both have just a tiny bit of black along the upper left hand side of the sticker. Both of them seem to have the same amount of black on them. It's very negligible. And if you wanted to avoid this, I would create an inner offset just so that it cut a little bit more on the white. But all in all, I think the accuracy is pretty good. And the difference between the top part and the bottom part has been eliminated. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Drop yours in the comments. Go create something amazing. And I'll see you in the next video.